Hello everyone! In this video we are going to have a lot of different stories and a lot of different news stories. Keep a critical mind as always. I will always try to put all the evidence and proof out there. If there isn't enough then also you can search for yourself but I will try to keep all those things out there for you guys and as always keep a critical mind and I hope you enjoy. Bit of an update on what I had mentioned before about Vox and the whole Demon Hungers and uh, the sample kerfuffle that happened, the recent issue that happened. Diego, the person who did the music for him, says uh, that you know they use samples in his work. The use of samples isn't free because a lot of people make the samples and then they have it out there to be purchased. The thing is you have to be careful. Other people can purchase it as well. Talked publicly as soon as I heard there was a situation going on about it saying I chose silence is if I'm responsible for whatever's going on. Uh, people assuming the worst and blaming without a clue of what's going on are a big reason why the vibes are so rancid sometimes. Uh, feel free to talk to me directly if you have any sort of problem with the way I handle things. I promise you that we'll both benefit from that. I actually want more info, want a conversation about this. I'll be more than happy to do it. Let's go on what people are saying. Uh, it says maybe disclose to your employees. Uh, no. Uh, th what the what the heck? This is just a dumb take. That you're using third-party samples in the first place. Like, did you ever tell Vox or anyone at Niji they use samples that were still for sale? It's none of their business. Samples are used in all these types of stuff. Music uses samples all the time. Why wasn't this clarified from the very beginning? If it had been, we wouldn't have ended up with further legal disputes and joint statements, would we? Uh, they're just angry that Niji Sanji has egg on their face pretty much is what i'm taking here they're just angry that needy sanji has ended up with egg on their face don't worry we clearly informed we were working with that again here in the segment and other commercial projects isn't considered infringement clear this you freely discuss people's views on misunderstood infringement public platforms only some are extreme i uh, imagine a small voice being heard a grand chorus in the end these faint voices just get drowned out by the flood suddenly un abashedly thrust someone into the spotlight so enthusiasm isn't it number one it's as simple as a misunderstanding not more not less miscommunications happen that's about it i'm only responsible for my own actions and have not been made aware of the processes regarding the other party that used the same sample two i've been very clear multiple times ever since august regarding this issue that being confused about the situation is completely reasonable and understandable not sure what else you expect from me people are expecting too much honestly presenting an option an opinion and discussing things in a civil way is something I absolutely encourage. It's this sort of awesome behavior that leads to proper conversations about the topic. That's not what this person was doing by assuming intents without the sort of fact checking uh, to back it up, but speculation. If they behave in that sort of way, I'll absolutely give them a hard time, but it didn't thrust anyone anywhere. If I wanted to do so, I would quote retweet this person for everyone to see, but I don't think that would fix anything at all. So this person's being very responsible. This Diego person's being very responsible, but also calling out people who are just the needy sisters who are crazy. Um, they don't want their opinions to be seen. They're more than welcome to discuss them in private. If you're unhappy with the way I handle things too bad, I guess, definitely want to apologize for defending myself in a way that's much more civil than accusations these people are throwing without a hint of hesitation. Uh, and it says, I probably could talk about how samples are part of my production process, even my own personal work. I The use of samples isn't free. And then, you know, he says the same thing. Maybe disclose it to your employees. Imagine think you've received total unique uh, movie music music in the movie music and uh, find out that it's in fact not all unique. It is unique. Samples are still unique. I mean, you could use a sample and then you can edit it out and you edit it around and mess around with it. I mean, freaking Kanye West made his freaking, uh, started his career with pure samples. A lot of rappers, a lot of R&B and all, you know, rappers especially, they started with samples. Absolutely. Samples can make careers. Samples can be used in a very distinct way. You talk about music and not, not know that samples are a part of it. You're just ignorant. Imagine asking nicely about the situation to you again. Uh, don't know about assuming I messed up. Learn from the person above. Ask first. Act afterwards. Honestly, the fact that you can't even wait for an answer before uh, accusing, blaming, even without, even though we are literally replying to someone making the exact same mistake is pissing me off. Be patient talk, listen, learn, but that's something that Nidhi Sisters can't do, unfortunately. Uh, NDF can't do it. Nidhi Cultists can't do it. None of them can do it. Being so chill about this, but some of you guys are just being absolutely ridiculous and accusatory for no reason. This S is tiring. Accusatory, I can't even type. Anyways, I don't even expect an apology at this point. This is hope some of y'all learn from this. They won't. Believe me, they won't. Bro, I'm a musician with integrity. He's a sample as a bass for my songs in a movie score is a big effing no. Oh God, they, this person is is claiming to be a musician. Show me sources. Uh, all the time I write this was the case. So Vox and Nietzsche knew, but didn't know how much of the song was based on a sample. When you talked about Vox about it, I can almost bet that he thought it was just a silly little sample you used. Never liked you. I'm gonna be honest. That's why this, this. This is the crux of the issue. He didn't like the person. That's why he's doing this because he doesn't like it. He has a vendetta against this person. So that is the reason why he's saying all these things. 
not because you know he has a point but because he has a vendetta uh i thought you were a professional at least using commercial samples as a big and important as this movie is it wasn't big and important it was just a, se a separate project it's a big f you you could have started there guess it explains a lot thanks for the last exactly it explains a lot this person doesn't doesn't like him to start off with so he already has a bias he's already coming off just with that as an untrustworthy narrator big time untrustworthy narrator i can't trust anything that he says now because of the fact he has shown his bias right there so that is something that these sisters always do they really hate anyone that makes their oshi look bad of course you can dislike people that make your oshi look bad but don't go parasocial like this like extremely parasocial like this diego i speak publicly samples are part of my production process sister maybe next time tell that to your employees what just how brain dead could someone actually be that's the one thing i wanted to say and of course there are people who are like you know you can't blame diego of course i don't blame diego i don't blame him at all like i said music uses samples a lot a lot so i don't blame him at all this is just sisters taking this to the extreme another meme this time with vox and uh, the nidhi sanji debacle that i covered yesterday in my video take a look at it if you want to see the full coverage of that but um it is on there it's you know it's titled you know the uh, illegal issue of copyright strikes that that uh, Nidhi Sanji has. It's like, they stole my music. What, WTF? Uh, so yeah, and then they went st straight to Klanosaurus and it says, again, I was wrong. <laughs> they stole my music. I was wrong. Then, you know, his apology about saying that everything that was used was uh, with a third party source giving the samples. The samples were the same. He thought they were stealing his stuff, but they really weren't. But I mean, still, I'll give him for being, you know, he can be memed on, absolutely. But at least he apologized, unlike other people that never apologize. Now, I have been covering this for several episodes, for several what, videos, because they keep popping out with new cards again and again and again. This is their card pack that's going to happen for the Hololive official card game that they are running. It's going to be on September 20th. It's going to have ultra rares, etc. Right now, I'm just going to be going over everything that's going to be happening. Of course, you have Kiata here, and here's a different look for Kiata. Very cute. Love it. Uh, you have Mume as well. You have uh, right here, Sora. I'm going to be going over every single one of them because the, the message is going to be the same. Here's Aski. The messages all up here are going to be the same. These are going to be the ultra rares and uh, that are going to be popping up for each and every one of them. Aki Rosenthal, the, um, as it says here, of course, booster pack, blooming radiance, the regular rares, the ultra rares, um, of Louis of here we have as well. It's, this is freaking, this is so, this is freaking cute. This is of course, another wonderful person here who is the Degozaru, the Degozaru Iroha. It's the Gozaru Iroha. I had a brain fart. I apologize. Then we have Polka here. Uh, Iroha is part of Hollow X, by the way. Polka is part of Hollow Fifth, Hollow Five, Hollow Fifth Generation. We have Suisse, the shining star, the shooting star that we have. The diamond that we never knew we were going to have until she showed up at Inanaka Music and has done the wonderful things that she has. Here's another one for Suisse. And that is all that we have right now for uh, Hollow Life card game. They've done an amazing job of pushing it. Of course, we are going to take a look at everything here. The products that are going to be out. They have, I'm going to switch it to EN so we can see the English side of it. Um, for beginners, I think they even have like the rule set now. How, yeah, they have the rule set, the rule manual. What is it? Uh, starting the game, the card types, everything. You can look all of this up. Booster Pack is a great option to expand the starter decks. Like everything, they have a starter deck, which gives you the basics. And then you have the booster packs, which can give you ultra rares and such. And I'm pretty sure the starter deck will come with a rare or something special. Like, for example, um, in the early days of Pokemon, that's, the starter decks came with ultra rares and stuff like that. Booster packs now are, the nowadays come with rares and, and foils and things like that. So it is amazing to uh, see them that actually push this. And as you remember, uh, Yago did say that this was one of the things he was going to be doing in order to increase the reach of Hollow Life in all aspects, in, in order to get the community together and get the community enjoying everything. All of that stuff is what they're doing right now. And they're doing an amazing job. In more Subaru news, we have her releasing a new song, a cover. Cute and catchy song and PV are lyrics, composition, video production, Nami Guru, and illustration by Nekomo. Oh, it's an original song. It was made for me by them. Please listen to it a lot. Hot Dog Streaming League. So yeah. It was an original song. I thought it was a cover, but it's an original song. Of course, I'm not going to actually play the music because I want you guys to actually uh, watch it and actually be, you know, doing it. I'm going to show you a little bit of it, but not very much, as you can just see right there. Um, and that, there you go. That, that's all I can show you, unfortunately. A lot of fun stuff. A lot of little animations there. 
with the Subaru, the Subaru we know and love, the style that we know and love, her original style. Uh, her orig I think this was her original look. Yeah, I think this was her original look. But yeah, sixth anniversary there. Have all the girls from her generation there as well and all friends and all that kind of stuff there. All the different styles. Aqua is there, of course, because Aqua is a wonderful part of the same generation and a close friend of Subaru. So this is just wonderful. Again, I wanted to show pieces, bits and pieces of it, because whenever things like this come out, I apologize if it seems like I'm just doing literally bits and pieces because that's what I'm doing. But whenever things like this come out, I want to just showcase little, you know, snippets of it because I want you guys to actually go to the channel, Subaru in this case, and watch it for yourself and enjoy the full song for yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, this is like, let's see what some people have to say. Oh, it's all, let's translate it. People were saying, it's so good to have all the second generation students and also have a good mom. I was like, oh, when I heard Aquatan, but I was relieved because I could feel five people in second generation. So yeah, people were happy that Aqua was in there. I was happy that Aqua was in there and happy that, you know, Subaru is still with us after six years. Holy crap, that's a long time. We're moving on to merchandise in general. Just merchandise of recent anniversaries that have been going on. Right now, Hololive is celebrating the second generation sixth anniversary goods being on sale. The acrylic stands with original illustrations by Hechima Sensei, all four types. Set of floor clear cards, Aurora Sakochi, four types. Commemorative tumbler, have prepared photo case with messages from the second generation members. So it is what a lot of people would call boilerplate merch. It is merch that is known to sell. So that's what all companies will do, Nidhi Sanji and Hololive together. Uh, and here we have the actual visuals, which is beautiful. This is a beautiful visual. Love it with the reflections, everything done well. And here's the visual with the sixth generation stuff. So that one is with the sixth generation stuff in there. This is just it without anything, any of the announcements. And here, of course, are the prices in US dollars for the merch. Set of four clear cards, 12 US bucks, the Tumblr 19 bucks, and the bromide case is $15. Here we go with the cards, the tumbler here, you have the bromide case, and you have the acrylic stand for types. Acrylic stands for 15 bucks for each one, and the Sakosh bag. I don't know what the Sakosh bag is. I'm sorry, but we'll tend to take a look and see if we can find it. There we are, the Sakosh bag. It's this thingy, Madoops. This thing of a bobs, thing of a jubers, thing of a goobers, whatever you want to call it. It's right there. 26 bucks each. Not bad actually for pricing. Of course, that's plus shipping. Shipping is going to be depending on where you are. And of course, you might have to use Geek Jack because this is the original Hololive store, the official one. You might have to use Geek Jack if in your area it doesn't, you know, the original one doesn't actually apply to you. And of course, the prices change a little bit on Geek Jack. It looks like compared to here, it's actually a little bit cheaper on Geek Jack, uh, interestingly enough, which is fine. But they're both official Hololive stores. And Talking about Geek Jack and everything, we have the Hololife Fantasy third generation. Their specific uh, things out there. Their fifth anniversary merchandise will be on sale it's until 6 p.m. Uh, the day that this was done, which was the 16th. It already passed, unfortunately. But let me just show you what they were putting out there. Um, because that had been going on for a while. They had these little uh, magic. Oh, then you had the Hoppies, as they're called. Uh, and you had someone else. This isn't, this isn't Yago, by the way. This is another uh, Hololive staff. That's why they, they're, they're not allowing, they're not putting the face. But the Holo Pro stuff here, it's all sold out. Of course, it's going to be sold out. All this stuff gets sold out very fast. A lot of times also they put sold out because it's no longer available. Uh, instead of putting not available, they just put sold out. It looks better. Uh, everyone is guilty of doing this at some point. So that happens. Uh, it's not only Nidhi Sandy that does this. Hololive does this sometimes too. Of course, it could actually be sold out. We don't know. It could actually be sold out. Um, let's look at the EN side to see what it actually says on the EN side, what, what they were selling. The ear cuffs. The ear cuffs was, was, was what this one was. The uh, the bag, the, the tumblers, this stuff, the hoppies as you saw here, and the ear cuffs here. You had the ear cuffs, which weren't like, which I guess are like earrings, but you know, they can fall off, so be careful. But yeah, you have all these here. Uh, diorama stands and all the other stuff that you saw there were also on sale. Now they're sold out, unfortunately. Uh, for those who were able to get it, congratulations. For those not, like me, I was able to get anything because, you know, you know the reasons. Um, unfortunately, you have to wait till next year. Ozki, one of the originals from back in the day of Inanaka music along with Suisei. But this time, Ozki had her solo show, Voice Entropy, additional performance day one. Thank you very much. The pioneers who gathered at Toyosu Pit for the truly amazing scenery. And here is some pictures that someone took. It was day one of her major debut live. Uh, it was also, you know, the wonderful, wonderful flowers that someone sent there. I'm not sure if it was Hololive or someone else. But someone sent her a wonderful presentation of flowers here. This is a fan, of course, taking pictures of it. Another one for Ozki here. And uh, Toyosu Pit. Of course, you had people in the hoppy for Ozki. People waiting patiently and people um, absolutely enjoying their time there. People ready, ready to party. 
ready to have fun with their Kami Oshi. And this person's uh, tweet says, I have arrived at the restaurant and claimed to calm down. Thank you for the hard work on day one. I'll be there again tomorrow, so please come along. And as you can see, she is having a lot of love, a lot of care, a lot of compassion, a lot of very, very, very good well wishes. And of course, I'm going to show you what other people have put out there. The sea of colors here for Aski, of course. And uh, the moon was out tonight for that day. Told you to pit in the morning, goods advance. 1430, 1500, all those hours. Uh, other people with their happies, of course, not showing themselves because that would be doxing themselves. But, you know, the hand towels, the happies, people lining up. Uh, someone outside had, uh, had Aski in there. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's cute. Cute, creepy, whatever you want to call it, but it's cute. And people were really enjoying themselves. And, of course, Hollow Light, look at here. It was full. It was a full house. Standing room only, literally, because that's all it was. It was a pit. Standing room only. All full. Amazing. Love seeing that. There you go. More pictures of it, because I just want to show you guys how these things... This is before everything started, of course. But um, this is what happens when you create a community that shows you a lot of love. Aski deserves this. Aski and Suisse, they both deserve the love and support and everything they've been receiving. Here is also another, another uh, show of everything. The support they've been receiving from fans from Hololife, from everybody, because they worked their ass off at Inunaka Music. When that failed, when that, you know, failed to be big and it the, the project ended, they luckily had the chance to go into uh, Hololife, at least Aski did. Suisse joined way before that, uh, but Aski had a chance to do uh, project, like do uh, Root B or Root Beta, which was continuing in Hololife. Root Alpha was her just quitting everything and graduating. And luckily she didn't. And she went Root Beta, which was getting uh, in there, you know. So very much fun. A lot of people enjoyed themselves. A lot of people had fun. And I just wanted to show you guys a bit of that. We move on to Roboko-san, one of the first VTubers. It was in like Gen Zero. She's a Gen Zero of Hololife, the OGs, the ones who started it all, along with Sora, Miko, Roboko, Fubuki. Those people started it pretty much since the beginning. Then, of course, you have Aski and Suise, who came later on in Inaka Music. But Roboko is one of the longest ones. Besides, I mean, Sora is the longest one, but Roboko is among them. And she has done amazing. She's had a 3D since the beginning, I believe, because that's where they started. They started with 3D, giving you a little bit of history on what Roboko-san is doing. Here you can see her design, her model, just to give you guys an idea. She's doing Doing things inside of GTA RP, which is what's going on right now. And she also had, you know, her recent live, like a little recent uh, solo thing. Why am I talking about this? She's doing taxi work and, and mechanics. She's a mechanic in, in the RP. She got her uh, wonderful gold play button. She's over a million and she has her gold play button. And as we know, Hollow Live is not like Niji Sanji. Hollow Live will send you the play button like they've done with Fuamoko. They've done with every single talent from here on out. How do you know? This looks like a bedroom. This looks like maybe a hallway in a house. It doesn't look like it's been on top of a corporate setting, a white wall with, you know, studio lights type of thing. It looks more warm and cozy and at home with Roboko-san right here, posting all her cute little plushies and Roboko looking straight at it in a really cute way. Really big congratulations. Like I said, she's one of the OGs. She is one of the long time people. And of course, unfortunately, as time goes by, people remember the newer ones and sometimes the older ones, the OGs, get left behind by the uh, Kaigai Nikis, the people in the West and things like that. Roboko-san has always been someone that I've watched. She is so energetic. She gets scared sometimes. She, she has fun. She has lots of fun. Wherever she does, she has lots of fun. She is um, under underappreciated, I guess. One thing you could say, not underloved, but she's underappreciated in the sense that a lot of people don't even know about her. But yes, uh... I'm very glad that she got this. Congratulations. And I hope every single Hololive girl gets to reach this at one point in time. Iron Mouse's new single, new song, original song has come out and it was worked on by Dylan Goose Studios. We had a huge honor of working with Iron Mouse on our latest music video, Time to Feast. Huge shout out to the team who made it possible. And this is what I've mentioned many times before. Iron Mouse spends a lot on getting music videos and getting it animated correctly and everything like that. Because look at this, look at this animation and then you'll see what I mean. These are really good animations. It's really well made. A lot of effort has been put into it. The 3D side, everything. The animations are fluid. The background is, the motion is fluid. Everything looks really, really well done. And that takes money. Like five figures, a lot of times, money. And that is why uh, I'm always very happy when she gets, you know, subathons and donathons and everything like that doing very well. And also, I believe this subathon that she's doing, she's currently on, I think she's still on it. Uh, she's also giving some of that to the... IDF, the Immunodeficiency Fund Foundation, she's going to be doing that as well. So she always gives to charity. She always gives to uh, artists like this. 
And these are the team, Dylan Gu, Ramen Look, Sorian Art, all these people here, all the wonderful people who worked on it. And of course, moving on to this, the original song, music video, the original post, this RWBY animation team, banger alert, this was amazing. His banger, master and team made great work. Animating this stuff in 3D ain't easy. Making it look fluid and making it look like just it's an anime ain't easy. It's it's not not easy at all. And this is something that I'm very happy that she was able to get. Absolutely pleasure, absolute pleasure of handling the vocal production for Mousy's new spooky original song. Definitely one of, if not the coolest music videos I've helped with by far. So please check it out. And of course, here you go. This guy is, is shown right here. It's like, this is me, Thunder Scott. <laughs> well, here you are, Thunder Scott. You're getting shown again. So glad it worked alongside Hala CG and Shiro Beats once again. And of course, Iron Mouse absolutely ate, ate it with her performance. Uh, it's always such a joy to help make incredible voice shine even brighter. And of course, um, all this wonderful stuff here, all this wonderful stuff is just a feast to look at. It says, I've watched this 15 times right now. Incredible work. And the song is such a bop. It is. It is absolutely a huge bop. And it is something that um, I am very happy that she was able to have done. And like I said, Congratulations to Iron Mouse. You deserve it. You work hard. Works really super hard. So congratulations again. In more Be Shoujo news, we have uh, After Hours Cafe, our very first visual novel featuring the lovely Matara Khan. Thank you so much for inspiring us. Download it for free at the link below. The Matara Khan's Beach Adventure. And then of course you have it here where you can take a look at it and have the full download of it. Of course, you know, it is just amazing to look at it. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome they were able to do that. And it is a fan project it is like a fan made project after hours cafe itself uh yo is it voice acted i'm so proud of you all thank you for your work of course uh you also have because let's see this has received 13.4k views uh matara is a goddess and i can't wait to try this out i don't know why that one was restricted but uh okay it might be someone that's known to be a spammer maybe i don't know. uh but after hours cafe what are they let's just take a look at them real quick artist group we may or may not serve coffee so the artist group that does things for Matara Khan recently worked on splash art for a project. Only the one who worked, I'd be happy, you know, uh, for After Hours Cafe. Uh, they do a lot of other things here that they've been doing for the Momos, Matara Khan. They've been doing, you know, pushing out a lot of the art that they've been doing. A lot of the, uh, you know, uh, different things here. Oh, that's cute. That is really cute. That intro is really cute. But yeah, just showing all the stuff that they've been working on, everything that they've been doing. Time lapse of the art there. Uh, damn, that's a lot of work put into it. Holy crap, that's a lot of work put into it. Of course it would be. And of course we have the other stuff there, uh, which, you know, you can take a look at or not. You can take a look at After Hours Cafe. You can see their at right there. So you can check them out on Twitter. And uh, here's After Hours Cafe. So you can check them out on Twitter right here. And uh, they have been doing wonderful things. And congratulations on this wonderful project being finished and out. Welcome back, everybody, to the VTuber Showcase, the place where I like to build communities, not drop them down or compete with each other. Just build them up, build up every VTuber that I can find and give that love that was given to me and helped me grow and making other people help grow as well. Sharing the love as the community should be, not a competition. We're doing Quinnism, Kiriana VTuber, EN Viet, which I'm assuming is from Vietnam. Uh, Grim Re Reaper VTuber, horror game streamer, art and rig, it's done by this person, bannered by them, and art tag, Quinism art, fan art, etc. So this is their look. This is their full look here. We're going to take a look at their actual content. It says, uh, horror game streamer, you bring the coffee, I play horror games. Here's some of their chibi stuff here. It says, uh, we play mostly horror games, so that's your thing. Hope you enjoy your stay. Welcome to Purgatory. Let's take a look at some of the things they've done. Let's take here. Well, yeah, that would scare the crap out of me. I'm sorry. If I was in that, if I was in that experience, hell yeah, it would scare the crap out of me. Uh, thank you again, uh, of course, for being a part of this VTuber showcase. I'm going to be showing all of your channels, including right now your YouTube channel. I hope that this helps you grow your YouTube as well as other parts of your community. And I hope that you have a wonderful week as well. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.